today I wanted to check out what has been for me growing up a pop culture reference but something I've never seen before, a TV show called America's Dumbest Criminals. Going into this, I know that it's a very old show. I don't actually know if it still runs anymore, but I'm not sure if it's going to be like all criminals are dumb or it's going to be actually like videos of really stupid criminals like you've been framed style or whatever the american equivalent of you've been framed is so i'm interested to check it out i'm dipping back into your subscriber curses so like share comment subscribe all those other boring things that youtubers say otherwise an irish curse will befall you and that curse will be the next time you lose something and look all over for it and finally after days and days possibly weeks of not finding it you'll break down buy a new one then the next day you'll find the one that you couldn't find and it'll be in a place you had already looked at least half a dozen times thank you for that suggestion feel free to suggest more below oh i love the inconvenient curses if you want to see the video without me talking over it as usual that is linked in the description box below okay this is season one episode one so god knows what year this was released Mobile command unit somewhere in Utah. Hi, and welcome. I'm Daniel Butler. <laughs> you know, there's a reason that we changed the names so of the criminals good. that you see on this show. It is our sincere belief and hope that many of them have realized their mistakes and discovered that being a criminal just doesn't pay. That's... They deserve a second chance. But there That's are some good. people who need protection from themselves. They need to be members of the Witless Protection Program, which we offer here on America's Dumbest Criminals. Our first story comes to us from Captain Mike Coppage. Oh my god, it's such old school video editing. Himself and everything in his like house you can do that gasoline. on a kid's computer now. The SWAT team was, was several blocks away waiting to deploy and our initial response team, which was our negotiators, they had gone up and surrounded the house and had started trying some kind of dialogue, oh, you know, gathering information. Interview with the police officer. Come on out, Ronnie. We can work this out. It'll be alright. No, man! Forget That's it. acting. I, I drenched this house with gas and, and, and this whole place is gonna blow. Is this a recreation? Ronnie, wait. Wait, Ronnie. Now just slow down. Ronnie, there is it's always hope. Let's talk. Oh, shut up, man. I've talked all I'm gonna talk. I'm into this now. Ronnie, wait. Ronnie, That's quite wait, sad, Ronnie. Really. There was a tense silence. The captain was ready to give the SWAT the team the signal to go in. Did I miss that? Then... What is it, Ronnie? You got a match? You see a match? Mm -hmm. What'd you say, Ronnie? Matches, man. Uh, I left my matches in the pickup truck. Beautiful house. Uh, sure, Ronnie. You can get your matches. Just, uh, was not prepared. I guess preparedness would be the key on that one. So. <laughs> I don't know if I find that funny per se. Victoria's rank robber and he had registered. Officer Chip Simmons of the Pensacola yeah, Police Department you. reduces a dumb criminal's rock solid story to rubble. A couple years ago, I was working in the narcotics He's unit a as a man, narcotic investigator. And uh, what we would do on occasion was we'd go through these hot spots, complaints about drug activity. A lot of these places were behind uh, local nightclubs. Well, um, on this date, uh, we hit some of these locations, and as we hit one of them, uh, the entire unit jumped out of a van, and we ran and stopped some people. Do not resist. Come on, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything, man. I didn't do anything. Oh, yeah. Acting so remote. Uh, we found some cocaine on this one individual. Um, but he didn't have any identification on him. And we were trying, you know, we tried for 20 minutes trying to figure out who this guy is. He kept giving us one name, and then he'd change it a little bit, and he'd give us an address, and he'd change it a little bit. But he always had a story, you know, or a reason for why he changed it and what, you know, some kind of excuse for what uh, the name problem that, that we would uh, confront. So I asked him again where he lived. Um, he said something like 100 Johnson Avenue. I again thought that he was being so smug about having this address already so in his a mind. Fake address, I would test okay. him to that. And I asked him, you know, is that that blue house on Johnson? He said, yeah, that's the blue house, the big blue one. 
I said, the one with the, the white car, and I was parked there. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, thinking that he's, you know, he's got me. So um, I figured I'd further test him because, um, you know, I still didn't believe him. And I, and I finally confronted him. I said, nope, that can't be your house. I know who lives in that house. I said, that's the, the Rubble's residence. I said, that can't be yours. And he looked at me, strange. And um, so I, I realized he didn't get it. So I said, yeah, Barney and Betty Rubble live there. You, you can't live there. And he thought for a second. He looked kind of confused. I bought that house from them. About a month ago. <laughs> Eventually, I, we found out who his, what his real name was. Um, it wasn't Fred Flintstone. And he okay. didn't buy the house from like, the Rubbles. Mm. And uh, he was arrested. So. That's an amusing anecdote at a dinner party. I'm getting this is like a background kind of TV show. It's not like something you'd really focus on. You know what I mean? And now, actual surveillance cam footage of a crooked cook giving gourmet lessons to two Oh, an actual officers. footage. Okay. Today, Chef Crack has been invited by these two undercover narcotics officers to cook up some crack cocaine in their basement on video. Chef Crack doesn't oh. know he's being oh. videotaped as he gathers together the fine ingredients. First of all, you need a Ziploc baggie of a controlled he's substance, teaching them how to do it water, in their oregano, thyme, or oregano? and an ashtray. Now, Chef Crack will lightly simmer the whole concoction. Then he checks it to see if it's done. Now, be sure to add more water because there's nothing worse than burnt crack. Well, that's Is all the time we have. Did that actually just teach us how to make crack? I mean, I don't know how to make crack, but that sounded authentic. If you'd like to write to Chef Crack, just contact him at Chef Crack State Pen in care of the kitchen, where he'll be serving up goulash for the next 15 years. I had information this guy was growing marijuana in this house. I love we couldn't get any probable cause to obtain a search warrant. So we went and just was going to try to knock on his door and see if we could get consent to search. How you doing? Fine. We received information you're a cultivator of marijuana. We'd like to come in and take a look. I ain't no cultivator. Okay, I said, I well, do you mind if we come in and search? He said, no, I don't mind. Is it legal there now? So he signed a consent to search. Maybe not at that time. Okay, so he signed it, he didn't have to? Is that what was done? As quickly as the intensive search began, it ended. Hey, what's this in here? Uh, workout room. We just walked through, I went to the first bedroom, opened the closet, and he had marijuana growing in there. <laughs> and a uh, incubator with the lights on it and everything. Well, what's this? Marijuana. I said, I thought you said you weren't cultivating marijuana. And we were videotaping the whole time. He's standing in I front of the video said camera and he said, Well, I ain't no cultivator. I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the officers explained that cultivating was like not a religious the term, but the man was show. indignant, and he still insisted. He says, oh, I'm not a cultivator. I'm just some guy that's got some marijuana growing in his house. <laughs> so. Isn't that an ABC arguable quiz defense? number 211. The people in Concepcion, Peru, were shocked when a man stole two chickens. Why? Was it because A, it was the first crime since 1762? B, chicken stealing was a capital offense? Or C, there was only one chicken living in Concepcion at the time. E. The correct answer was A, it was the first crime since 1762. What? Probably because the punishment for chicken stealing was a Peruvian torture treatment we now call a perm. Really? And now, actual surveillance cam footage of a man who breaks into a retail shopping center and overlooks some important details of his disguise. We call it Mall in a Day's Work. Okay, this burglar uses a bag for a disguise. Not bad, but the eye holes are way too small, so he oh. crashes into the first thing... Okay, this is what I expected to, to see on this show, display. to be honest. Now, he peers around the store, but he realizes the eye holes just aren't working. See, that's dumb, so and it's real footage. Only well, to come back moments later with bigger eye holes and a flashlight. Now he's getting around great. But he forgot one thing. He's wearing his mall guard security pants. 
He was identified later as the mall guard on no duty way. at the time. That was and it wasn't what I was expecting at the same time. I definitely thought there'd be more footage of the actual crimes, but then when the presenter kind of expressed that he wanted to allow people to go forward with their anonymity, I get that. Like, I, I think that's probably a good thing, but I do think the recreations were pretty bad. As a person who has done some bad acting in my time, I feel like I can say that. Oh wow, we agree on something. I've got shout outs for two lovely people today. The first person is Kim Sparks. Kim wants to shout out all her healthcare worker friends. She says, your dedication gave us a chance. Hang in there, keep up the good work and hopefully we'll get back to where we once were. Thanks for continuing to try. That's such a lovely message. Thank you, Kim. And my buddy Yoshi wants to actually shout out my parents. He says, for giving their all to raise their children. He also wanted to shout out this little guy. How are you, buddy? You want to say hi to Yoshi? Hello, thank you, Yoshi. That's it for today. See you on the other side. Bye. What do you think of this setup here? It's different, isn't it? He's over it. He's just over it.